Waka Magaruba. This is Will Sanchez. My special guest today is Robin Howell. She is the fourth recipient of the Joy Johnson Spirit Award as administered by the Galloway Running Club. I'm thrilled to have Robin as a guest. Thank you for having me, Will. This is very exciting. Robin, before we go into the Joy Johnson Spirit Award, Certainly. you're the fourth recipient. In fact, I think you were there for the first one. Oh, absolutely. Before we go into that, let's introduce you to our audience. Tell us where you were born and something about your growing up years. I was born in Brooklyn, New York, and I am the oldest of uh, two girls, my older daughter. And I started running with my father in 1969. We lived on Ocean Parkway, and we used to run along. There was there's one side for um, bicycles, and there was one side for horses. There was actually a bridle path. Mm -hmm. And we would run on the bridle path, which was in front of our house. But my father was afraid of us getting hurt. It's far away from home. So we ran back and forth just on our block until we made a mile. And it was a whole mile. That was a lot back then. And I had a wonderful childhood growing up in Brooklyn. It was just terrific. I went to the local public schools, and then I started college when we were still living in Brooklyn. I started, I was 15 when I started college, so my parents asked me to stay home. So I went to Barnard College, which I loved. At 15, you, yeah. so when did you enter kindergarten? Were you uh, four? I was, well, I was, I was born in December, so I started before I was four, yeah, five, and then I skipped the fourth and the eighth grades. Okay, because you so. were smart? Back then I was, you know, I think uh, I peaked early, you know, yeah, so. Exciting. I yeah. mean, to go to college at 15, yeah. so you were the youngest, so how did that feel? You were obviously one of the, probably the youngest in the class. Maybe, but it felt fine. Uh, you know, I think it's easier for a girl than it is for a boy. Okay. And I had a lot of friends and a lot of local friends and then some people in the dorm. I spent a semester living on campus and then moved back home when we moved to Manhattan. I commuted from there and I had a great time, but I really, you know, the 70s in New York was a lot of fun. I mean, it was it was dirty, there was a lot of crime, but everything was affordable, so you could do things. You could go see baseball games. I mean, sitting in the bleachers at Yankee Stadium was like $1.50. It was great, you know, go to concerts for $12. But I really, at some point, wanted to get away, so I went across the country to beautiful Palo Alto, California, and went to law school at Stanford, which is just the most gorgeous campus. Mm -hmm. And in, back then, it was a quiet town. It was just as the Silicon Valley you know, era was starting mm -hmm. back in 1980. In, so, in college, what did you study? I studied psychology and political science. OK, and you had an idea of becoming a lawyer at that always, time? Always, always wanted to be a lawyer. My dad's a lawyer. My mother's a college professor. She taught psychology. So we kind of did, but uh -huh. my sister did the same thing. Besides your, your mom or your, or your dad, were you inspired by a television show like Perry Mason? Yeah, I think everybody, in, when they first watch TV shows like that, they go, I want to be a defense lawyer, kind of like Perry Mason. But then quickly I said, no, I don't think so. So I actually never practiced criminal law. I was always a civil litigation. I was, um, so I moved to Los Angeles when I graduated from law school because I wasn't quite ready to move back to New York. Uh -huh. And I ran into a friend of mine from law school who also lived and worked in L.A. And, you know, we started dating almost immediately. And I figured out pretty quickly I wanted to marry him. Uh -huh. So we were married in April of 85 and both continued to live and work in L.A. I, like I was 24. 24, okay. 24. Those yeah. 15 to 24 really yeah. went fast. It did, it did. And then... You know, we were busy working. Uh, he and I lived in Venice, you know, by the canals in L.A. And then we decided to start a family. So I had Brian, my older one, in 1987. I cannot believe he's going to be 30 this year. Uh -huh. And then my younger one, Kevin, was born in 1994. And at some point you moved back into New right. York. Right. So my husband and I were both civil litigators. And one day, our rabbi at our temple in L.A. said to my husband, you know, I really think you should become a rabbi. So my husband said, wow, that's an idea. You know, and he was in his 40s. Uh -huh. And he said, you know what? I think I'm going to do it. So he had to learn Hebrew, you know, really conversational Hebrew. And uh -huh. so he took tests and he managed to pass so that he could get in to Hebrew Union College. 
and he moved to Jerusalem to start his studies for the first year in July of 2000, June in 2001. And then in July of 2001, we moved to New York City. Mm -hmm. So it was great to be home. I still had a few friends in town, and I had actually applied to run the New York Marathon. I had run a few marathons by then. And in 2001, I applied, and because I was an out-of-towner at the time I applied, I got in. Very yeah, small back then. It was under 25,000, and, yes, yes. and I got in off the lottery, so I had to train. So I had to find a running group to train with, but I was barely on the Internet back then. And I went to a race in Central Park, and I went to the very back because I was fairly slow, and I heard people with beeping watches, and I said, do you do the Galloway Method? because I was trained in the Galloway Method for my first marathon two years earlier, and that's the only way I've run. Uh -huh. So I've been running with the Galloway Method since two th uh, it's 1999, when I ran the Marine Corps Marathon. That was your first marathon? That was my first marathon. Did you run it with your dad? Or? No, no. Um, my dad and I ran no more than four miles together. Oh, okay. He was a short distance person. Okay. So but what inspired you to go beyond the four miles? Well, you know, I didn't really run much in L.A., and I got kind of heavy, and I had two kids, and I was working, you know, mommy track, which means, you know, nine to five for a lawyer, plus all the mother's things and mm -hmm. housework and all. And uh, in a very short time span, in early 99, my niece was born, and I went back to New York for that. And then my mother had been diagnosed, luckily incorrectly, um, with uh, cancer. Mm -hmm. She had the operation. It turns out it was benign, but it was like six weeks apart. And when I came back, I was a little, you know, startled at you know the juxtaposition of brand new life and near, you know, near near death. I mean, she wasn't she wasn't sick, so it was wonderful. Yeah. But I was going through all my mail because I'm the one who does the bills and the mail, and the pile was this high. And I found something from AIDS Project Los Angeles that said. If you raise $2,600, we will fly you to Washington, D.C., put you up in a hotel, and get you into the Marine Corps Marathon. So I said, you know, I'm not getting any younger. I'm, gonna, I'm almost 39. It's time. Life, life's unpredictable. The Marine Corps was my first, and I trained with AIDS Project Los Angeles, which they bought the Galloway books. Yeah. They gave us the Galloway books, and they told us to train the Galloway method. Back then, even if you were running like a 12-minute mile, they had you running five minutes and walking only a minute. I've run for many charities. I started, I ran for AIDS Project Los Angeles. I've run to raise money for prostate cancer. I've run, I ran for Windows of Hope for the survivors and Windows of the World right after the yeah, World Trade yeah. Center. I've run for Fred's team several times. Team for Kids I ran for several times. Mm -hmm. uh, I ran the Donna's Breast Cancer Marathon, the first national marathon to fight breast oh, that's cancer. In Florida. And I did that one. I raised over 7000 for that one as well. I ran for the Blue Card, which raises money for destitute Holocaust survivors. Oh, my gosh. And then when the New York Marathon was canceled in 2012 after Hurricane Sandy, I was living on Staten Island at that point, and Staten Island had been devastated. Yeah. And um, I decided that. I would sign up for that 60K in Central Park. And if I finished it, I'd ask people for money okay. to raise money for two Staten Island oh, charities. Oh, you to do it first and then ask them Yes, them. because, okay. well, I had already asked for money. That year I had run with my sister, uh, and we were raising money. So I thought, it's, it's an important thing. Okay. It, was, it was a disaster. And I actually had no, you know, I'd never trained for more than 26, but I figured, what the hell, as long as I go slow enough, it'll be fine. Yeah. And I did, and I completed it in a little over seven hours, 37.2 uh -huh. miles. I'd run a, a loop, and then I would change my shirt, eat something, wash up, go to the bathroom for five minutes, then run another, and you do nine of the inner loops, plus a little more. And you have friends running each loop with yeah, you, so yeah, it's yeah, good. And I raised, I actually sent out an email afterwards, and I raised $3,200. Oh which was really nice. Okay, but now you mentioned your husband went to Jerusalem to start or to train for as a rabbi. So yes. obviously he came back. Is that when you moved into Staten Island? When he we came moved, back? well, when he came back, he went to school at Hebrew Union College here through 2006. And then when he was ordained, he had a pulpit actually in California in Salinas, which is very beautiful. It's mm -hmm. 17 miles inland from Monterey and okay. Carmel. And he was there for three and a half years, and then he came back, and he um, 
was able to get a pulpit on Staten Island in the summer of 2010. You call it a pulpit? Yes. There are, there are rabbis who work in education, and there are rabbis who work at the Union for Reform Judaism, and someone who actually has a congregation. Uh, it's called a pulpit, a pulpit rabbi. Interesting. Right. So, and he's been there since 2010, and we love it. We love it there. We love the people. And it's wonderful. Okay. Probably at that time, the kids were out of the house. So I have an empty nester, and yeah. that's what made me decide to take a breather from practicing law and actually work in the you know, nonprofit sector. Okay. So, and on Staten Island? And I do. I work on Staten Island. What's the name of the nonprofit? I work for Project Hospitality, which is uh, probably one of the largest nonprofit agencies on Staten Island. And they provide a continuum of care to people who are homeless. They provide anywhere from drop-in shelter to transitional housing to permanent housing. They uh, do, they have uh, mental health services, they have services for people with AIDS, for people who um, have uh, substance abuse mm -hmm. issues, and we have a large soup kitchen and multiple pantries. I'm in the administrative office. I work for the executive director, and right now I am actually doing two projects that involve volunteers, yes. Okay. So it's been very, very different from being a civil litigator. Okay, well, that's for sure. Like a, a, a but, welcome change of pace. Yes, absolutely. I mentioned in, that in 2016, you were honored by Galloway with the Joy Johnson Spirit Award. Well, first, tell us what is the Joy Johnson Spirit Award and, and how you felt, were you surprised and so forth? Oh, totally. It? So the Joy Johnson Spirit Award was established by Will Sanchez in honor of his good friend Joy Johnson, an amazing woman who started running the New York Marathon at the age of 60. Is that correct? 60? Yeah, yeah. And she ran 25 consecutive. consecutive New York Marathons. She was a streaker and on occasion won her age group. I think when you ran with her, she may have won it That's that year. That's right. That was the last time. Yeah. 2008, and, you ran it uh, together. She was a woman of grace. She was determined, and but quiet in, in her, you know, I, I, I found she was lovely when we would be with her at the waiting for the, you know, the start when you're not in the first wave. You still have to get there really early. So we sit on the we sit on the cold ground in Staten Island at Fort Wadsworth, and I've met Joy several times there, and uh, she was very inspirational, obviously. Yes, yes. And um, it was, you know, that's the highest honor at the Galloway. I mean, we used to give out silly awards, and we still do, but you know, there are several serious awards, and this is one of them. And to me, it's the highest honor because. The Galloway Group has been my running family since I moved back to New York City in 2001. Mm -hmm. And I'm very close with the people in my PACE group and other PACE group leaders and people I've known for many years in, in the program, both in and out of the program. People come and they go and they come back. And we get lots of new people every year, which is very exciting too. Okay. And it's been great. And sure. I was completely shocked. Nobody told me I was getting it. And when I heard my name, I was like, oh my gosh. I was just stunned. I was really uh -huh, stunned. Uh -huh. It was beautiful. It was really wonderful. Okay. They do and a good job of that. I think yeah, all the recipients yeah. are, say the same thing. They were yes. always anxious to see who was going to get it this year. Yes. I mean, I had no idea it was coming. Um, but I, I guess I, I did a good deed this year because the Staten Island Half Marathon was run on the tail end of Hurricane Matthew. And the weather was atrocious. And I had already in advance said that I would have a brunch at my house for people after the race. Uh -huh. And everybody was completely drenched and covered in mud. And they came to my house, and we had three showers going, and the washer and the dryer. And everybody, I gave people who didn't bring, you know, new clothes, warm clothes. And we all ate and drank and enjoyed ourselves and warmed up. Oh, and it was really great. quite that's nice. Great. I probably had 30 people that day. That's great. That's <laughs> so it was really great. fun. Oh. Besides being a pace leader, you also part of the management team. Together? I was um, when D moved to D um, Whitman, who had been running it before, uh, moved to Westchester. There was nobody to take over, so a consortium of us decided to do it as a team, which had not been done before. 
And I did that uh, in 2012 and 2013. And then I stepped back, because I live on Staten Island, and I didn't know, I, I ended up making most, almost all the runs anyway, yeah. but I thought, you know, I'll let somebody else do it. And I believe Denise stepped up, and it's been great. They're wonderful, and it, the, the, it's very diverse. And it's been, I've stayed as a pace group leader for 10 years, and I don't think I'll be giving that up. <laughs> I enjoy it, and I really am very close with the people in my group who've been there for quite some okay. time. All right. Well, yeah. you mentioned the first time you ran the Galloway Method. Perhaps you did five minutes of running and one minute of walking. Correct. But that has changed dramatically. Yes. What is the uh, current uh, walk-run ratios for the uh, Galloway group? I run my races in somewhere between nine and ten minutes a mile. So the ten-minute ratio is three to one. And Jeff came up with a big breakthrough about two years ago when you determine that you get most of your benefits from the walk breaks in the first 30 seconds. So a 3-1 ratio would be 90 seconds running and 30 seconds walking. So that's the new paradigm. Yeah. The new, so if you're a, in the, for a 10-minute miler and for a 9-minute miler, which on my shorter races is nine, I run, try to run 9 minutes or less, it's 2 minutes running for 30 seconds walking. Okay. So the so the common denominator is that 30 seconds of walking. Right. The other number could vary right. depending on what you're doing. There's a 20-30 group and a 30-30 group. Um, so it goes down to that as okay. well. I was, was going to ask, you seem to make a distinction between racing. Now, when you, in your training, is it a different set of ratio? Yes. The ratio is the ratio of your training pace. So Jeff has something called the magic mile calculator, and you run a mile pretty much as fast as you can, and then you plug that time in, and it will tell you your training ratios for 5K, 10K, half marathon, and marathon, and your projected time and your, and your running ratios for those same distances. Okay, so do the magic mile, run a mile, as fast as you can without puking. I mean, right, I that's, that's that. without puking, that's correct. <laughs> well, if you don't eat before, you don't puke. <laughs> <laughs> that's your secret. That's right. I'm doing the magic mile, I'm not eating. Exactly. Okay. So say you ran a right. nine-minute mile, so and you think you're, you're going to run, then then he'll tell you what that turns into as a mar I think it's like 1.3 you have to add. So you're probably going to run maybe a 10 and a half minute mile for the marathon. So then you have to train at a 12 and a half minute pace. So then you take the ratio, whatever that ratio is, for 12 and a half minutes, and that's your training pace. And then when you're running the race, you take the ratio for 10 and a half minutes. All so right. you, yeah, so all it's... Right. Luckily, you don't have to do the math. It's all in some exactly. like, database exactly. or some website. That it's gives terrific, you, yeah. And, and it works. And, it's, and it really does work because it's predicted my race times within, you know, 15 seconds for like a marathon okay. and even and less course, for a half. And some people get faster, especially if they start at the beginning, they do a nine-minute mile, and near at the end it might be doing dramatically better, you know, seven-minute miles. They can make the adjustment as needed. Exactly. Exactly, and I did get faster over time. I lost approximately 30 pounds at some point, started running more and eating less, and I started getting faster. And in about 2006, I realized I was within striking distance of qualifying for Boston. I, was, I think I was 14 minutes over. And over the next two years, I took it down by a couple minutes each time, and I got to like 4.04 when I ran the Big Sur Marathon shortly after my father died. And um, I thought, you know, I really need to push it a little if I'm going to break uh, four to qualify. So um, unfortunately, our fathers passed at the same month. Okay. And um, right after I came back from Big Sur, it was when your dad had, had died. Okay. And when I came to the wake, you introduced me to your other running friends. Dave And Glattner. that's how I met Dave. And he qualified for Boston the following weekend and said, if I make it, I'll train with you. And so we trained together, and he's quite fast. He but is, he was he very nice to train with me. And then I ran the New York Marathon that fall in 354, so I qualified for Boston. Oh, my God. And New York, a very tough, tough yeah. marathon.
he was inspired by his kids to run. He was watching the marathon, and his daughter, her son, said, Daddy, you should run it too. He got me over that hump of really working hard to, yeah, he's very generous. to get it. He's so very generous it was wonderful. Now, he's mm -hmm. now a regular with the New York Flyers. I don't know if he was a flyer back then. I think he's also training people now, too. Oh, yes. Yeah. He's, he's been stars, great. Runners, helping runners. Don't necessarily have to be in the same club because no, whoever you too. run into at Central Park. Oh, that is so true. You know, you can make a lifelong friend if you have to run a 20-miler and somebody else does, too, and you happen to see each other and you say, how long are you going for? And you say, 20, and then next thing you know, you're talking for four hours. Okay. When was your first Boston? 2009. 2009. 2009. Now, something happened in 2010. You, you got ill. I ran my second Boston, and I noticed I had slowed a little, and I was running, at that point, I was running my, my uh, shorter races in under, under between seven and eight minutes a mile, and suddenly I couldn't break an eight-minute mile. So I thought, maybe there's something wrong with my breathing. I went to a pulmonologist, and he said, no, your breathing's fine. Go see a cardiologist. So I went to a cardiologist, and he said, you know, you have a heart condition. So I said, what, what's wrong with me? And he said, well, your aortic root is dilated. It's too wide. It's thinning. And your aortic valve is, at that point, it was moderately in disrepair. And now it's severe. It's gotten worse over time. And so blood will back up into my left ventricle, so I don't get the oxygenation I need. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little slower and more out of breath, but I managed a couple more Bostons, and I uh, still... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, it sounds scary, it, you know, it is scary, when anything but involves it, the heart. Yes. You know, yeah. it's, it's the organ of love, but it's also the organ of life. And so, I and so have this a very... So this is obviously not a death-defying uh, no. prognosis. No, This is something... Yet. They say you can manage. They monitor it. Monitor. At some point, I'll need surgery, but they monitor it. I get a yearly uh, MRA, which is a magnetic resonance angiogram, and uh, I get uh, echocardiograms twice a year. So, And at some point, they'll say, well, it's, it's time. Not, right. But until then, I'm running fine. My goal now is try to run one half marathon in under two hours each year. Okay. And once, if I do that, I'm satisfied with everything else and just have fun. And I've, you know, I've run um, 40 marathons and that ultra, and I've had the great, great pleasure of running a marathon with my sister and running a marathon with my son, both of my sons. In together fact, or separately? Separately. The last goal is to do it together. All three of all you, three all four of, us, of you? All, we may be four if my sister's up for it, but certainly with both of my sons. We ran uh, New York with my older one in 2015, and I ran uh, Philadelphia with my younger one in 2015. Kevin, Kevin. Uh, he must uh, he must be uh, much much stronger now. He was in your group, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was training for a half back then. But now yeah. he's able to do. Holes he's done. With you. He's done four full marathons. Oh my gosh! Time but fly. he's he's going to work on his time. He broke four in his first, and not again. So he's. When he, when he gets ready, he's going to be for real. He was actually ready to do this one, but he had gotten injured. Okay. So it's been wonderful. All right. It's so changed my life. You're doing charity work on Staten Island. Mm -hmm. You love it. So professionally, what do you see for yourself? Continuing doing more charity? Right now, I like the nonprofit that I work for. However, I'm thinking about possibly getting maybe specialized training to practice a different area of law. Perhaps immigration law. Uh, perhaps might, there might be a calling for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but I've never taken a class in it. But I'm thinking maybe I should. Oh, excellent! So yeah, excellent. so I'm really, I'm looking forward to expanding my horizons, both professionally and as a lawyer, and maybe doing something. You know, okay. continue what I'm doing now at least. Okay, and then athletically speaking, do you have? <laughs> A destination? I'm afraid to ask. You know, you're going to do an ultra marathon. No, I mean, you know, I'm not a 50 stater. Okay. I've probably run um, the fewest number of states for the number of marathons. I mean, no, that's not true. I know there are people who just run New York. That's right. But I think I've done like New York, California, Illinois, Florida, you know, the D.C. area, okay. and uh, not and oh, Toronto. I've run Toronto twice, okay. and Boston. What's and coming up this year? What's the destination? Uh, What's your fun run? Yeah, it's just going to be New York. I 
in the back of my head, I think I'd like to do the other two majors that I haven't done. I've run Boston, New York, Chicago, and Berlin. So I'd like to do London and Tokyo because they seem they'd be really fun to do, but Tokyo. nothing in the That's not in the near not in the near future. Well, it's very hard to get into. So I'll keep applying to the lottery and then oh, bingo and right. then we will. We'll go. One day you'll win the lottery. Thank that would be great. But oh, right. no, nothing anytime soon other than New York. This year will be my fifteenth New York. Fifteenth so oh, that be a streaker. No, not a streaker. I missed one. So it'll be my tenth in a row. But it'll be my 15. I don't know what the rules are. I think if you do 15 or more, you're a streaker. Oh, I'm not sure if that is two consecutive. No, they, they, they'll they invite you to the party. Oh, they're they, oh, that's so, so I don't get to go to this year's, I don't think. I think after I complete 15, they'll invite me to their to the, party. To the streaker's party. To the party. I, just, yeah. I was there once because I was there picking up Joy's bib when they mm -hmm. honored her. Uh, yeah. After after she passed away. So, so yeah. You meet people from all over the world. You do. Oh, you my do. gosh. Very and running special. the race, too. I, it's incredible, the people you meet. All over. The New York City Marathon, nothing like it. It's the best marathon in the world. Different every year, as oh. you know. And training's different every year. And I, I love helping people. I'm a feral runner. I don't read books about running. I really know very little about proper training. I just do it for fun. But... I've made mistakes over the years, and I've certainly learned things. And my, you know, accumulated knowledge I'm, I share with people all the time. Especially with the Galloway Running yeah. Club. And then I'm also a member of SIAC, the Staten oh. Island Athletic Club. Oh, yes, uh, yes. Which is my Staten Island peeps. Um, and That's great. So, so in every borough, there's a club. And so it's, as you know, a Staten Island girl, you're yeah. a, a SIAC member. Yes, That's great. absolutely. And, great. Yeah, you probably win awards there too. That, that I, 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 I have, and it's exciting. And you know, they're 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 very wonderful runners on Staten Island, and the, well, probably the finest few. runner in the city is from Staten Island, Mike Cassidy. Mike Cassidy, yes, yeah. yes, and I've seen his pictures with Meb. Yes. <laughs> on that note, thank well, you so thank much. Thank you for coming so in. much for having me. Mm -hmm.